Bugs in regular everyday software is one thing, but bugs in the software that is used to extend one of the world's largest blockchains with a market cap in the hundreds of billions, that is a whole other story. Jay Freeman, who goes by the name Sarik Online, who you might know from his work on Cydia, which was an alternative app store that you used to be able to use on jailbroken iOS devices. I actually personally used it on a jailbroken iPod Touch that I had many years ago, and it was pretty cool. It worked kind of like F-Troid on Android devices, although it was a little bit more difficult to install because I'm pretty sure that jailbreaking was always a requirement in order to install it. Uh, but from Cydia, you were able to install pirated apps, and more importantly, you were able to install apps that weren't even available in Apple's App Store from any developers that didn't want to have to go through the whole rigmarole of being able to release applications in Apple's App Store. Now, these days, he works on a project called Orchid, which is a kind of decentralized VPN that allows you to pay per the bandwidth that you use rather than doing a yearly or two or three year subscription model that you see with most other VPN companies. Now, the decentralized part of Orchid, it comes from a few factors. One, that they use cryptocurrency for their payments, but also the fact that these VPN servers that you would connect to, they're not all operated by the same company. They are run by individual people. Uh, so I guess it's a little bit more similar to Tor nodes. And then to incentivize people to run those VPN nodes, they have this cryptocurrency called OXT that you have to stake in order for you to become an Orchid node. And then of course, the more that you stake, the more likely that you will end up getting a block reward and then making more money that way. Uh, and then for the individuals that want to use the service, in order for them to actually pay those small amounts for the small amount of bandwidth, because the idea behind Orchid is for it to be pay as you go, this team also created a nano payment system, which is kind of like a layer two scaling solution for crypto payments. Now, if you've ever dealt with buying pretty much any kind of cryptocurrency before, especially if you tried to buy a very small amount of the cryptocurrency, you were probably shocked at the transaction fees that you had to pay. You see the transaction fees on various blockchains, they work pretty differently than the transaction fees that you'll see with payment systems like Visa, PayPal, or MasterCard, because instead of them just charging you a flat percentage of the transactions like those different fiat systems do, the fees for crypto are based off of the amount of traffic that the network is experiencing at that time. And this fee ends up being about the same for everybody, regardless of how much crypto they're actually trying to send or purchase. Uh, so this is really great if you're somebody who is crypto rich or if you're just somebody who's doing a very large transaction at a time. Like if the Ethereum network is very busy, you might end up paying something like $50 or more for gas fees. And gas is the transaction fee in this case. Now, that's not too bad if you're sending 100F, right? The fee for that transaction would actually be way lower than it would be for Visa and MasterCard. I mean, 100F, you're sending like three or $400,000. That's less than 1% or uh, I think Visa or MasterCard might charge you around two or three uh, or more. But if you're just sending $100 in Ethereum, Obviously, spending $50 to send 100 that really sucks, and that's not something that almost anyone is going to want to do. You will you could easily end up losing money quickly doing that. Uh, now, another one of these Layer 2 scaling solutions is called Optimism, or Optimistic Ethereum. So, as the name implies, this is a scaling solution for Ethereum uh, called a roll-up. Now, I won't go too into the details about how these rollups work. Uh, Optimistic Ethereum is not the only one of these, by the way. But in order to avoid having to interact with the Ethereum blockchain and thus take on these high gas fees, as well as transactions taking a long time to actually complete, these scaling solutions like Optimism, what they do is they'll mint basically Ethereum IOUs called wrapped Ethereum. 
And you can still trade this wrapped Ethereum. It's equivalent to Ethereum. Like if you have one wrapped ETH, then it's equal to one real Ethereum, but it's not actually Ethereum. I guess it kind of works a lot like how banks do. So say for example, you want to open a bank account with $100,000 and you go and give them 100K in cash and they're gonna give you an account that says that you have 100K in it. There, you'll have that little number on the screen, but the bank doesn't actually have your $100,000, okay? Your 100K is gone. Uh, banks don't actually keep your money in a vault. They loan it out with interest. That's how the banks actually make money. Uh, but one difference with these scaling solutions to the bank is that they usually have some kind of a smart contract that is holding the Ethereum. Now, this solution for scaling crypto, it isn't perfect, just like how banks can be robbed. The contracts and the protocols that create these bridges between blockchains, between the wrapped Ethereum blockchain, the real one, they can be hacked. And this is usually where some of the biggest crypto heists come from. Uh, somebody is able to trick the smart contract that is holding the funds to redeem the IOUs which is basically the wrapped Ethereum in this case, into sending the actual Ethereum to the hacker. There was actually a hack very recently on a cross-chain bridge called Wormhole that connects the Ethereum blockchain to Solana, where the hacker was able to steal 120,000 F worth over $300 million. And the operators of Wormhole, they had to replace that stolen ETH so that the wrapped Ethereum on their network would still have that one-to-one -one backing. Now, even though a hack like this is really bad, it is not the worst thing that can happen by any means. Like, let's say, for example, if a bank gets robbed, that's not gonna be the end of the world for the bank. As long as they can get the money replaced before everyone tries to start withdrawing their funds, it's fine, same case here with Wormhole, as long as they were able to get that F back in to get the one-to-one -one backing uh, restored before everyone goes and starts withdrawing their funds, then it's fine. A much bigger problem would be if you were able to steal the record of accounts from a bank, and then the, if the bank had no backup of this, that would be a huge disaster because without the record of accounts, the bank doesn't know how much money is in your account, who owes them money, who is behind on their mortgage. Hell, they don't even know who has an account with the bank in the first place. So if you mess up their record of accounts in some way, then that's it for the bank. Money can be replaced, but those records can't be. Now, the bug that Jay found in Optimism's network, it was actually a bug in the virtual machine that executes the smart contracts that are supposed to make sure the wrapped F or IOUs remain equivalent to the amount of Ethereum that they keep locked. So the full explanation of it is here in his blog called Attacking and Ethereum L2 with Unbridled Optimism, which I'll leave a link in the video description, if you're interested in reading the full details of it, because it, it goes into uh, a lot more detail than I will in this video. But basically, this bug that he discovered in Optimism would have allowed anyone who was able to exploit it to create an unlimited amount of the wrapped Ethereum without having to first deposit real Ethereum. Now, this bug was a lot more sinister than the bug that would let somebody steal all of the locked Ethereum because it actually is letting you mint tokens and then slowly drain the locked reserves with what would look like legitimate transactions instead of just taking it all without trading F for an IOU. And of course that would quickly get recognized and then you could get the, the um, authorities on you and even if you try to transfer that Ethereum to another wallet, that wallet could get blackballed. And so it's pretty hard to get rid of. This would actually let you get money out in a way that would be pretty difficult to track. And because the bug effectively gives you infinite capital, it can also let you go to other decentralized exchanges that are running on the Optimism L2. And then you can start mess up, messing up their economies by buying up all of the real tokens with your fake ones. And again, it'd be very difficult to differentiate the real tokens that are being used in legitimate transactions from the fake ones. Now, luckily, Jay disclosed this bug to Optimism responsibly. They were able to fix it, and as far as we know, nobody has actually used the bug maliciously. 
even though it was present in the network for something like 40 days. Uh, Jay was also awarded a bug bounty of $2 million for responsibly disclosing the bug, which honestly, I think is a little bit small considering the gravity of the situation. Uh, now, it's not a hack on Ethereum itself. Uh, I've, I've seen a lot of articles like this one, for example, that uh, are giving a kind of misleading title, right? It doesn't allow you to print unlimited ether. It's only letting you print unlimited wrapped ether, the ether that is specifically running on the Optimism network. Uh, and, you know, the Optimism network, while it is still small and it doesn't have a whole lot of eth on it so draining all of the eth that's locked up in optimism's network is kind of a small fraction of the entire ethereum blockchain but optimism is still a growing network and we're probably going to see different l2s like optimism continue to grow since they are basically offering a scaling solution for Ethereum in lieu of Ethereum 2.0, which keeps on getting delayed. So the severity of this bug, as far as how damaging it would be to other blockchains, it would have grown along with the Optimism network. So I'm very glad to have seen it patch before things got catastrophic. But that's it for this video, guys. Like and comment to hack the algorithm and have a great rest of your day.